So let's talk about another fundamental property of rigging, which is parenting. Parenting is super important for rigging because that's what drives a lot of how the bones interact with each other. Not only bones, but of course also objects. Once you learn about parenting, you're gonna use it all the time. It's incredibly useful. And I'm gonna show you guys an example of how it is used for rigging. So in this case, we have an object here. We can move this object however we want at the moment, and that's pretty nice. We can, you know, drag it or whatever. And it's cool if that's all we wanted to do, but if we had a more complex figure, let's say we have, you know, maybe there's, uh, there's two things here, maybe one thing over here. Now, what we could do is we, if we wanna move all these things at once, right, we could select everything and try to move that and rotate it. As you can see, the, uh, the origin point of this mass of objects is actually averaged in between all of their origin points. So you actually get a random point here, which it rotates around, as you can see here. But what if that's not what we want? What if we want this thing to actually be attached to this middle cube, right? Let's say we want all of these things to be attached to this middle, middle cube, or better yet, we have two of these things attached to this middle cube. So let's go ahead and attach these two. And I'm gonna go ahead and select them. It's very easy to actually parent something. You just, you just select the objects that you want to be children of the last object you select, which is gonna be this one. So basically you have every object that has been selected parented to the final active object. So let's go ahead and parent these two cubes over here to this cube, and then we're gonna parent this cube over to this cube. That should give you a general idea of how parenting works and how to apply it to rigs in the future as well, not only for objects, but for bones and stuff like that. And we'll show that later as well. But just to give you guys a general idea, if I take these two objects here, and I'm gonna shift select these, and the way parenting works in Blender is it'll take every single one of your selected objects and then parent it to your active object, which is gonna be the last object you select. So I went ahead and selected these two and then selected this one, and that should make this the active object, as you can see with the slightly brighter orange line around it. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control P, which is the hotkey for parenting. Now there's a couple different options here. We have object, we have object to keep transform, we have vertex, and we have vertex triangle. So the way this works is vertex is for parenting objects to a particular vertex of an object, which is not necessarily what we want as of right now, that's not too important, but it is possible. Triangle is the same thing, but for three vertices at once and averaging those three points. Now, object and keep transform object, these are the important ones that we want. Object is pretty nice. It's the most basic form of parenting. It won't necessarily keep your transform, which is in my opinion, very important. Keeping transform basically makes it so that the objects, the positions that they are right now in world space, they're gonna maintain those positions after being parented. Sometimes when you do the object, this probably will work out fine because they're all in the global space, pretty much one-to-one. -one. But sometimes when they're local, values and their global values differ, then you're gonna to wanna to use keep transform. So I'm gonna go ahead and get you into the habit of using this keep transform option because that's usually more useful. So we're gonna go ahead and use this one. And as you can see, nothing has changed except now we have these relationship lines that are being added. So these relationship lines can be hidden if you want to. If you hit the N key and scroll down over to display, there is a relationship lines checkbox here. If you don't see the relationship lines, you might wanna check that on just to make sure, but that will show you exactly what you need to know, which is that these objects here are parented to this object, so it'll all lead to the parent. Now, once we got that done, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what happens when I rotate this thing. As you can see, it's almost like you glued them on in a way. So these objects are now parented to this parent object, which is cube, and uh, we have cube 02 and cube 01 over here as children of that. And you can go in here into the object properties and you can also see the parent listed out here. And you can change it here as well if you'd like, but that's a little bit more finicky. Now that we've done that, you can kind of see how this is very helpful for rigging, but to show you guys even further how a hierarchy could work is I'm gonna go ahead and parent this guy to this guy. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that second and then hit control P I'm gonna hit K for keep transform, and that will allow me to not only move this, but also move this guy. And as you can see here, I can actually take this, move it here, and then take this, and then move it here, and then still move this. So as you can see here, we have a very interesting rig, so to speak, a very rudimentary rig. Ultimately, if you use a little bit of imagination here, you could almost see that this is like an arm of some sort. So you could have, you know, this is the, these are the fingers here, you know, they, they come in, they close in or whatever. 
and then the hand moves around and then the arm moves the hand and the fingers together so that's basically how rigging works the parenting part of that rigging is very important for getting that hierarchy which is what is called the hierarchy of parents so this chain of parents is what drives the motion that you want in this case so now you'll notice that when I zero out this guy he's actually not going to go directly to the center of the global coordinates anymore so if I do alt R alt G it's completely zeroed out and yet he's not on the origin and this guy can move around and I can still alt G this guy and he doesn't move at all because in actuality this guy relative to his parent is at zero 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 this is the origin point that he started that based on where he was parented on in the first place so remember that keep transform so if we went ahead and unparented this guy in a point where it's not obviously the origin point because this is supposed to be at zero 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 which is where we originally parented him to his parent object but if I go ahead and alt P and then hit clear parent you'll notice that this guy goes back to the origin point because his local space was zero 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 so I want to go ahead and show you guys that real quick this is the location of the object if I go ahead and undo You'll notice that the location of the object is still at 0, 0, 0, even though it is clearly at a different global location. Now, if you want to see the actual global locations of your objects, if you ever wanted to, but just to demonstrate the difference here, I'm going to go ahead and use the 3D cursor to our advantage, and I'm going to use Shift S, cursor to selected. So cursor to selected will bring the 3D cursor to my selected origin. And as you can see here, it's now here. So we have the location, the local location of this cube here at 0, 0, 0 relative to his parent. And yet, over here, if we scroll down to the 3D cursor coordinates, you can see it's actually at 0.94, negative 0.8, blah, 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 blah. So that difference there, if it's, if it's a different value, then you know that when you unparent it, it will go back here. Now, you can also unparent things and then keep the transformation. This is where it's important. Alt-P and then clear and keep transformation that will actually bring it to, as you can see here, this new location matches the 3D cursor location we saw earlier. That is exactly where it is now. So if I went ahead and zeroed that out and then brought this guy and parented it again here, you'll notice that this guy is still at 0, 0, 0. This guy's not at 0, 0, 0 because I moved him around a bit. I'm going to go ahead and zero him out now. And now he's in the middle and this guy is not. So anyway, that's just a general overview of parenting as well as local and global coordinates that have to do with parenting. Um, hopefully this opens the eyes of how parenting works. Parenting will work very similarly with bones and vertices and stuff like that. You should try it out. Um, you can make different objects vertex parents, but you can't parent vertices with each other. That's a little bit of a different story because they're all worked into the same object anyway. But yeah, that's basically the overview for parenting.